Um, Unless we think this is just a certain brand that we're talking about here, we're not. Um, at the trade show last week, there's a lot of brands talking about natural running. And even uh, Alberto Salazar was quoted last week about how he changed or is changing uh, Dathan Ritzenstein's gait um, to be a more uh, midfoot striker uh, after years of being more of a heel striker. And so it's, it's not just one brand and it's not just um, you know East African or, or, or people that grew up on shot. Obviously, everyone is, a lot of people are aspiring to be this way. Um, at the same time, though, we're talking about Zola, who's an elite runner. Um, Dathan's the lead runner. The East Africans uh, from Ethiopia, from, from Kenya, uh, obviously grow up barefoot and are used to having that, that, uh, that strength. I guess how can the average person, um, might be a, a, a four-hour marathoner, become a more natural runner? And I'll give that to uh, Danny Abshire. Of course, the elite runners, uh, just like Zola mentioned, they do a lot of form technique that um, focuses on landing landing under the center of mass. If you look at every track drill that was ever invented, uh, high knees, you land directly in the center. Butt kicks, directly in the center. Uh, everything was taught to be centered. Now, a lot of people come into the sport and they go up to a shoe wall and they go, wow, I really like that particular shoe. They get emotional with it and they go, uh, I like that shoe, and it must have like these big giant springs on the heel or whatever. It seems like that might protect me from this horrible concrete and asphalt. Um, so, and then like Jay said, they come into that with that posture, that computer posture and that car driving posture. And there, I call it the fast food mentality society. I mean, um, so we don't allow people to go barefoot. Uh, or without a shirt in most restaurants, so that's uncivilized. Uh, you know, Americans have all these structured ways of doing things, and you know, sometimes to our demise uh, when it comes to feet, I'm sure. Um, so they have to start in a position where they start to understand their body. I mean, that's one of the keys. Lorraine Mahler and I talk a lot about this, and Paula Newby Frazier and I have been. Uh, doing her camps for the past 20 years. And the first thing we say is if you want to be a good athlete, if you want to be a good runner, you have to listen to your body. And we block all that out and we say stuff like, no pain, no gain, do or die. We use all this force and power to run. Danny and I were leading a group this morning. The main thing we were focusing on is relaxation and run naturally by relaxing and let it happen as opposed to forcing and using power. You know, half of the problems we have are from the braking and rotational forces. The other problems that we have are from simply pushing off too hard after we brake. So almost all the injuries can be related to braking and rotational moments or propulsive moments, overusing the pro propulsive muscles. So those runners, to even start to want to evolve, you have to open your mind because you know, in the 1300s, everybody said, hey, Irene, if you sail your boat too far out in the ocean, you're going to fall off the edge of the world. We'll never see you again. Please come back. <laughs> Guess what? You know, Galileo and all the other people said the sphere is round and we're not going to fall off the edge. And, you know, Magellan and people circ circumnavigated the world and proved that that wasn't true. You know, if I tell you that uh, running on your heel is the walking gate, you want to debate that about about that? Take your shoes off and run on the concrete or the grass. You'll have the sensory input, and you'll land perfectly. You won't land on your heel. You'll break your calcaneus. It's a big bone. It's for walking and adaptation. So I guess I'm going around a long way to say something, but um, you have to first have an open mind. You have to think about postural changes, such as Jay and, and Danny talk about. You have to be have an awareness okay, then you can embark on a longer period of adaptation. Because again, with the fast food society, we want it our way and we want it now, okay? But it takes a long time. I've been working on my running form my whole life. I guess I never had to think about it when I was running in the woods in Tennessee and dodging trees and thinking that was fun, you know? It was fun. Now we make it this serious thing well, I got to get off the couch and I'm going to run, run a marathon in 12 weeks. I got a lot of work to do. You know, you know that's a horrible thing to do. We, we talk about this all the time. We, we don't like that as coaches. We don't like that. 
we'd like for you to get off the couch and start walking, thinking about your posture, thinking about your diet, thinking about the food you intake and the hydration needs of a human being, and then go out and just start you know, the Lydiard process of working your aerobic system a little bit every day and developing the capacity to do the next thing because you cannot go from walking to doing a marathon safely or on the couch to doing a marathon safely. Yeah, go ahead, David. Yeah, I just wanted to add one thing that, one thing, because you are all retailers and there's going to be a lot of people asking you questions about all this new kind of running and stuff like that, but one of the things that you want to start, like Danny was saying, start getting them thinking. One thing is, is that you have to learn to listen to your body. It's absolutely dead on. But the th statement that, that really hits people well that you can use is that it is not running that hurts your body. It's the way you run. Running is a great activity, wonderful sport. People have used it since men have been on their hind legs. It's the way you run that hurts you. So get smart, you know, start thinking about, well, how do I run? How does it feel? Is it is part of my body sore? Why is that part sore? What am I doing to make that injury happen? Where is it coming from? Get to the bottom of it, you know? So that's, people aren't used to getting to the cause of their problems. They want an Advil, you know? They want like, you know, I, I was at I was the Chicago Marathon Expo and there was an Advil booth that says, when my body is screaming, I refuse to listen. Right? Oh my God. So, I mean, it's just, that was like, I wish I would have had a camera. But anyway, it's just like, it's not running that hurts your body. Tell that to everybody you know, and then so that'll start them thinking about good. Running is a good, safe thing. It's how I'm going about doing it. Irene, jump in. So um, you mentioned that people go to the shoe store and they see these, these big springs and they think this is going to cushion them and it's going to protect them. And I think that we've all been sort of misled. And there's, there's research now um, that suggests that the softer the cushion, the more cushioning that you have between your foot and the ground, the stiffer you're going to land. There was a study that was published in 2006 by Bishop that found that when you land barefoot compared to landing in a cushioned shoe, you were more stiff in your knee when you land in a cushioned shoe. And you remember that impact peak that I was telling you about? That impact peak increases as you stiffen your knee. Think about it. If you land on a piece of concrete, what are you going to do to your knees? You're going to soften them, right? You're going to soften it because your body wants to maintain an overall system stiffness. You land in a bucket of sand, what are you going to do? You're going to stiffen your knees. So we've all, and I, I, I'm, I'm guilty. I did this. I, as a physical therapist, as a, as a clinician, I recommended highly cushioned shoes for people with stress fractures. I don't do that anymore. So I think that we have to, we really, there's a paradigm shift in the way that we think about footwear. One super quick one on that too. Um, when you talk about the softness of a shoe and everybody craving that because of the concrete, um, you have, even if you can land even underneath your body mass in a soft piece of footwear, you sink down into that footwear, you're sensing the ground. Your foot wants to sense the ground, you're not allowed to. It, it masks all the great communication and feedback to put your, your whole body in the correct position. And as you sink through that, guess what? There is time wasted, and to keep momentum and pace, you must have to push hard and strain propulsive muscle. So what we once thought was a good thing is actually bad because of timing, whole body uh, uh, feedback, which is called afferent feedback. It occurs in your forefoot. We mask those sensors. Thus, we cannot position our whole body in time and space to land correctly. Jay, jump in. Uh, just a quick, quick note. Uh, I swam for 12 years. and. Uh, if you talk to swimmers, not a day goes by in the pool that you're not paying attention to some aspect of your form. Always, always, always. And uh, I think one of the things about running is people just tend to want to let go and let their mind drift, which is great. I mean, running should be a stress release, uh, just like any exercise. But um, you know, form does come into play. So you know, we keep hearing you know messages come in as far as you know, pay attention to form, pay attention to form. Um, this isn't just something you do. You go to a weekend camp and you're, like, you're here right now and you do this and you say, okay, well, I did form work with these guys for 45 minutes and now I'm perfect, okay? So, you know, I, I have folks do form work, you know, uh, you know uh, Dr. Davis does work with feedback as well in her lab. And so, you know, we try and get people to, to kind of find form, feel form, do this when you're fatigued, when you're fresh. You know, there are ongoing things you're thinking about all the time to make sure that this form really stays. Uh, because when we fatigue, things you know, tend to go downhill a little bit. So this whole idea behind, you know, uh, 
always thinking about what do I, what, what should we focus on and making sure we pay attention to that, not just, you know, one day a week, but every single day we're running to make sure we're always, kind of, you know, training our body correctly and reinforcing the correct motion pattern and getting away from the, I like the fast food society comment.